So Honeywell have come out with a major new update for the Evo Home. And it's really interesting because one of the most asked for features has been, can you tell us when a zone is firing? It's hard for, to believe for a lot of people when they first get their Evo Home, what a great system it is, but no idea which zone is actually calling for heat. So you'd expect a flame icon or something like that on the home screen where the actual zone is, where all the information is, is it firing? Is it not? So everyone's been waiting for this feature and finally it has arrived. <laughs> so beginning of the year, Honeywell came out with this firmware update number two. Now they're saying they've skipped all the minor ones in between the one blah, 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 whichever it was and the two, and they've gone for the major update and rolled everything in, into one. So first of all, how do you know which firmware you're on? So to get all the new features, you need to be on firmware two. So to find out what firmware version you are on, you have to hit the settings button one time, and then you have to hold your finger on the device settings for 10 to 15 seconds. <laughs> it is extraordinary. Why would you need to do that? But anyway, that's what you have to do. 10 to 15 seconds on the device settings button. And there you have it. So you can see my version is version two, and the uh, minor version after that. So, the, the, But the most important thing is the 0, 2. So if you've got 0, 1, you're still on the old firmware. 0, 2 means you're on the new so the new firmware. And it's important to, that you have two different. You have one software for the Wi-Fi and one for the software. And you may have one updated, not the other. And it's important because one of the issues fixed here has been a Wi-Fi issue, apparently on channels 12 and 13. I never had an issue, but apparently that's fixed that issue. So to make sure you get um, all fixes, make sure you've got a firmware two on both. Go back to the home screen. So you've checked that you've got the right firmware. What are you actually expecting in this update? Honeywell say in this update, you get hot water boost function. So I don't have hot water on mine, but if you use stored water, you now get a boost function. What is the boost function? Well, it seems to be a basic time setting. I can't tell you for sure because I don't have it, but it seems to be from what I can gather, if your, if your hot water is timed to, to be off, so it's actually off, but you actually want it, oh, I want my hot water now or for the next hour, you just quickly hit the boost function and it will come on for a set period of time. So it won't interfere with your normal schedule. It will turn it on now. And as my understanding is, if, if the boiler's at, if the, stored tank water is actually being heated at that point, then it won't have any effect. And I understand actually that option is grayed out. So hot water boost is an extra, you can switch it on quickly without affecting your schedule basically. You also get an icon change. So this is absolutely huge. I'm, I'm just joking. So normally there'd be the icon here. I don't have it, but this is what it looks like. It's now a change from a dot, I believe, to an icon of a hot water tank and it will tell you if it's on and off by going red or blue. You've also got the, the Wi-Fi fix, as I said, a ghost zone fix. So if you were getting uh, zones which didn't actually exist, and apparently only a few people had them, but that's what Honeywell is saying, uh, that's now fixed. I never had that issue either. So the big one, heat demand per zone is now indicated. And as you can see, I have firmware too, and nothing is indicated. And that is because, <laughs> unbelievably, they've hidden it away in the installer menu. So there's no, you can't just quickly glance at, oh, that's, that's, that's calling for heat, that's not calling for heat. What you have to do is go into the installer menu. They call it the installer menu. It's not really, is it? It's the basic menu that if you want to set up your zones, you'd have to get into. But anyway, you hold your settings button for five seconds. Confirm and go to your system summary. And you now tells you in percentage terms what is calling for heat. So at the moment, nothing here is calling for heat, which isn't great help. So what I will do is I'll turn one of them on so I see exactly, show you exactly what happens. But basically it's percentage terms of what's calling for heat. So obviously the radiator valves can open in percentage terms, fully, slightly full, but they don't, it's, not, it's not just open or shut. So it'll, depending on how much heat, because obviously it's trying to keep a set point. So it gets just enough heat to keep that, that set point. So the percentage terms of being called for heat will be down here and the boiler control, which is obviously the, the wireless relay going to the boiler and how much is that actually calling. So the boiler, that control will be 
at the same percentage as the highest one from the from the other valves calling for heat. Let's turn this up. So <laughs> I'm pretty warm at the moment. I got like 24 and a half. I do like the sweat. Let's turn this right up. It may take a few moments to kick in, but I just want to show you. So it should be going flat out to. Let's just wait for that to kick in. So you can now see it's saying office 100% and the boiler control is 100%. Now, if I was only, if it was only trying to, if it was already at a set point and it's trying to keep it, it may be 8%. Um, the office would say 8% and the boiler control would say 8%. So boiler control is always going to say whatever is the highest of the other zones calling for heat. It's not going to be the total of the other heat. So if you've got two zones calling for heat and both are calling it 50%, it's not going to say 100% for the boiler control. Obviously, the, the same water is feeding both of those radiators. It's going to be 50%. <laughs> so that's, the, that's how that works. And you've got a flame mic on there and they can't bring themselves to put it to the home screen. So yeah, it's nice to have that feature, but quite honestly, really awkward to use unless you're really doing some deep information scavenging. It's not something you can quickly glance at. So <laughs> you finally got it. What else we got? We've got electric zone support. So this is a big one. If you have, for instance, electric underfloor heating, you can now control it with your Evo home. And it's a big deal because the, the electric zone can call for heat without affecting your boiler. So it has to be controlled by a BDR91. The limitations are the BDR91 is only rated for 5 amps. So basically you're, you're limited to controlling 1 kilowatt of heat. However, there are other ways around it. For instance, you can use the BDR91 to switch a bigger relay to do the controlling. And it does support TPI, so it is modulating. So if you've got electric underfloor heating or any electric appliance that needs to be turned on and off and controlled by a thermostat, you can now do it using your EVA home without affecting the boiler. And that's really the important thing. So it knows it's an electric zone. So when you go into your settings to add a new zone, you now get um, new options. So I go into my installer menu I go to add a zone, I'll just give it any name here. So these are your options. So you've got, what kind of zone is it? Is it underfloor heating? Is it a radiator valve? Is it electric heat, mixing valve or zone valve? So you've now got all those options. So it doesn't have to just be underfloor heating. And obviously your underfloor heating could be non-electric anyway, but however, you now got the option of underfloor heating to be controlled by the Eva home, the, you know, within the whole system or any electric appliance up to one kilowatt if it's straight controlled by the BDR91. So that's a biggie. You now get uh, information for the outside weather and it's right up there in the top left hand corner. So it's not that easy to see, it is there. It now tells me, for instance, it's bloody cold at the moment outside, it's minus one. I know that it could be a lot colder. Some places maybe minus 20, minus 30, like in Russia and places like that. But to me, <laughs> minus one is cold, and which is why my heating is full blast at the moment. And they also say this, this roll up of firmware updates fixes other maintenance and security improvements. So that's the, the headlines for, for this update. But the big things to take is that you now know the outside weather almost in real time, I think there's a slight lag. You can now control electric zones up to one amp or more if you use workarounds. But the, main, the big point about that, as I said, is it won't affect the, so it knows it's an electric zone and it knows that if that zone is calling for heat, it doesn't want, it doesn't switch on the boiler. It just controls that zone. The boiler isn't switched on. So that's big. And of course, knowing the, which zones, if you have problems, it seems like sporadically some, the boiler's coming on, you're not sure what's calling for heat. It looks like nothing should be, like maybe everything's half a degree over, nothing should be calling for heat. You can now track down what that is. It's not straightforward on and off. In fact, it's probably a little bit better. So the, the, like the, t, the TRVs are open and shut in percentage terms. So, you know, there's the pin that opens and shuts the valve and it can be slightly up. It can be 
it can be so it can be slightly open, fully open, whatever. I think the under, the agreement is it probably there's no water flowing probably till it's about thirty percent open. And when you see the percentage terms in the Eva Home display, it's already adjusting for that. So if it's saying it's calling for twenty five percent heat, it's probably taking into account that it needs to be be about fifty percent open to call for that twenty five percent. So it's so. It seems to have taken that into account, but I think for most people they wouldn't be thinking about that anyway. Although having said that, you've probably got to be a little bit technically minded to be getting into that part of the, the menu. So yeah, <laughs> for some people probably the most useful thing is it tells you the outside temperature. Now, for me, what would have been great is if you could have offsets linked to the outside temperature. So for, depending on how good your insulation is, the colder it is outside, the more heat you, you need to put into your property to keep a comfortable temperature. If you, it's fine if you're well insulated and there isn't, a, you know, what you put into your property stays in your property. <laughs> but for places like me where I have single glazing, it makes a big difference. I'd like an offset. So if, for instance, uh, if it's above 10 degrees, uh, keep, to, keep the temperatures at the scheduled temperatures, but if it's say below freezing, Add one degree. Uh, something clever like that would have been nice. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just wanted to really put an update out there because it's the question people are always asking me is, how do you know which zone is calling for heat? And now you, if you go into the installer menu, you, you can see and look at the system summary, you can now see which zones are calling for heat in percentage terms. And uh, just remember that the percentage for the boiler control will be equal to, to the highest percentage being called from any particular zone. It's not a total of all the zones. So, thank you for watching. UK.